to summarize what we said on the previous lecture is that the quicker a cell turns over, going from lay bio to quiescent to non-mitotic, the longer the S phase. This is true not only for regular cells, but it's also true for tumor cells. And that's why if you ever get a path report where it reports that the tumor has a high or large or long or big S phase, that's not a good sign. It's very hard to talk about stem cells these days without offending somebody's religion. Nevertheless, I'm going to try. There's basically uh, two types of stem cells. There's embryonic and adult. And often the word toady potential is used to describe stem cells, sometimes multipotential or pluripotential or omnipotential. But the result is the concept of a stem cell is a cell that is capable of producing a whole wide variety, uh, perhaps all types of tissues. And in the uh, example of a fertilized ovum, that is a truly uh, omnipotential stem cell, isn't it? Because as we know from basic biology, it gives rise to all types of uh, human cells. Uh, let's talk about uh, different roles of uh, stem cells. Uh, uh, they're so necessary uh, in studying uh, differentiation of cells because, as you know, stem cells are the ultimate undifferentiated cell. And as they differentiate through various uh, uh, generations and mitoses, perhaps under the influence of cytokines and growth factors, uh, they then become more differentiated, which we defined as losing some of its capability but gaining specialization, just like in specializing from general medicine to pathology. Uh, in uh, research, uh, we can knock out genes uh, in stem cells uh, and then see what diseases you know, these mice will have, and it's basically been a tremendous help and how we learn about diseases. Uh, as when I was in medical school back in the Stone Ages, uh, before they had cars or, you know, when we walked around with clubs and bows and arrows, uh, there was always talk about repopulating damaged tissues with cells that contained better genes. Well, folks, they're still talking about it. Are we that much closer to actually doing it? I don't know, but that's the ultimate uh, goal with stem cells, and some days, someday that may be uh, achieved. In uh, the adult, the bone marrow has cells. They were formerly called hemocytoblasts. They still are sometimes, uh, which are capable of differentiating into all the different types of marrow cells. Um, Sometimes a very small percentage of these uh, come out in the peripheral blood as well, and that's basically the a basis for uh, stem cell harvesting, where you take somebody's stem cells, uh, grow them, and then give it back to them, perhaps after you've already uh, knocked out their bone marrow with uh, chemo or radiation. It's been a very, very valuable uh, therapy in medicine. In uh, normal tissue development, you can see uh, relatively uh, totipotential cells in normal places in which they differentiate the growth centers, like the base of the hair follicle, like you see here. And the principle is, the more uh, undifferentiated the cell is, the more it can give rise to uh, more differentiated structures under conditions of what we're talking about regeneration and healing. Uh, here is a uh, part of a liver, uh, which doesn't look terribly exciting, but in uh, where the arrows are point to cells which basically give rise to normal hepatocytes. These uh, little stem cells in adults are all over, and they're not truly stem cells. For example, these cells here at the uh, limbus cannot give rise to all types of cells, but it's certainly can give rise to all types of cells in that area with regeneration. So here's the basic uh, principle. You have a cell, 
is probably going to look like the most boring cell in the world. Let's use the bone marrow as an example. It, uh, or perhaps it may look uh, very, very boring. Why? Because it doesn't have any differentiated appearance. Perhaps we want to call it a pluripotential cell. Under the influence of growth factors, cytokines, and the so important extracellular matrix, it can differentiate into several different types of connective tissue cells or even epithelial cells if it was really, really a totipotential cells. So here's your pluripotent, pluripotent stromal cell in the marrow under the influence of MyoD, Myogenin, and others differentiates into a myocyte under the influence of vascular endothelial growth factor or fibroblast growth factor 2 might differentiate it into an endothelial cell. Under the influence of SOX9, it's going to become chondroblasts and chondrocytes eventually. Under the influence of CBFA1, osteoblasts. Under the influence of PPAR gamma, fat cells. So that's the whole concept of stem cells or primitive cells differentiating. Under the influence of growth factors and cytokines, these boring looking nothing cells uh, differentiate. And in the process, once again, they lose some of their toady potentiality, but they gain specialization. And that's the whole process of growth, isn't it? Uh, let's go back to our uh, basic uh, trio in embryology called ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Well, the reason why mesoderm is brown and the other two are blue is because mesoderm basically gives rise to all of the tissues that we call stroma or connective tissue, pretty much what we saw right here. Whereas ectoderm and endoderm give rise to epithelial cells. Ectoderm, perhaps uh, epithelial cells of the skin and neuro uh, ectoderm, which is brain, spinal cord, and endoderm, which is uh, epithelial cells of the um, GI and uh, respiratory tract. So the principle is you take your primitive three embryonic layers and uh, we can see a pattern of differentiation from these layers and the very specific types of uh, tissues. And think about it. Isn't this another example of differentiation? And is the blastos blastocyst ultimately derived from a fertilized ovum. So there we are, folks, going from one cell to every single specialized type of cell you could think of in various stages under various uh, controls of cytokines and growth factors to become what we call adult differentiated tissues. And uh, that's going to lead us into our next big topic of growth factors, the GFs. And I'm going to give you the introduction, and then we'll go through all of them in the next uh, group. Uh, there's a lot of different growth factors. They all end with the word uh, GF. And they do a lot of things, but as you might guess, they cause cells to grow. They cause cells to multiply. They are mitogenic, all of them. But what they do in general, before we get into the specific ones, is that they are involved in locomotion of cells, contractility of cells, this marvelous concept of differentiation of cells, and in the case of healing uh, and regeneration, and especially healing, growth of new blood vessels, which we call angiogenesis, or organizing inflammation or granulation tissue. They're all polypeptides, and if you want, you, you could all call them cytokines, too. So let's keep it at that, and we'll go to the specific ones in the next uh, group. Thank you very much.